Well, welcome to the Talk with the Doc show. Today, we're talking about hidden causes of sleep problems. We're going to go over 11 hidden causes of sleep problems. My name is Dr. Shereen Benactar, and I'm a corrective care chiropractor and a functional nutrition and detox specialist. And this is our weekly podcast. If you're following us on YouTube on Dr. Shereen Benactar, then this is our weekly YouTube video uh, channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to connect with us either on Instagram, on Facebook. And our uh, channel is Dr. as in D-R, Shireen as in S-H-I-R-I-N. And last name is Benactar, B-O-N-A-K-D-A-R. You can always subscribe to our podcast on YouTube to get notifications, and we really, really appreciate your referrals, so please share this podcast, please share this video um, with those that you think would benefit from this information. And we're here to build a community, we're here to inspire you as an individual, um, and inspire you to make health changes every single week, um, and to bring out the best health for yourself, to make health habits, and bring one not only just to your life, but to the life of those around you, as well as to your family. So welcome to the Talk with a Doc show. So today we're going to go over 11 hidden causes of sleep. If you have ever suffered with a sleep problem, then you know that, um, oops, hold on a second, I'm trying to change this right in here. Um, then you know that um, uh, it can take over your life. Um, it can be daunting and uh, trying to solve this issue can really be daunting. And I often find that patients with persistent sleep troubles um, have tried many, many different things, but either they haven't tried them in the right order or it just has not worked for them. So believe me, I understand how you feel and I understand how frustrating this can be. In this podcast, we're going to learn about 11 hidden causes of sleep problems and we're going to discover what you need to do to sleep well. So stay tuned. Um, as many of you know, the truth is that our bodies are meant to work in sync with the natural rhythms of Earth, so with sunshine. For instance, when it gets dark outside, our bodies uh, should begin preparing for sleep. And for our ancestor, it was pretty simple. Modern society is just is not the same environment and sleep is an issue and it's becoming more and more complex because as it gets dark outside, we're indoors and we're um, exposed to artificial lighting. And what I see as a holistic uh, health expert, I understand that the body has a system and a rhythm and when it's not working properly, then there is a dysfunction happening in the body and that results from an interference somewhere in the body. Today, there are many things today that interfere with our ability to sleep in modern times. And for true healing, all those interferences must be removed first. One of the things we do in the office is we work on the nervous system, on our brain and spinal cord. And as we go through this, you'll understand how important brain is in terms of making sure that you have the right neurotransmitters for sleep. So this is definitely the case when it comes to improving your sleep quality. So what's number one? Number one is, are you really prioritizing quality sleep? Let's see what that, that's a very loaded statement. So let's open that up. Let's see what I mean by that. It, it seems obvious for many people that poor sleep often comes down to priorities. So many of us seem to associate getting quality sleep with being someone who's in bed at 8 p.m. They're unsocial, they're high strong so that they prioritize late nights with friends or on social media. So um, we're conflicted. Are we gonna be antisocial if we're sleeping too early? The truth is that getting a solid rest, night and rest every single night will boost our energy and our mental acuity and will which improve many areas of our life, including our emotional acuity and our social life. So you have to really sit down and rationally think about the behavior you identify with and how they may be sacrificing your health. If health and performance are important to you, then perhaps prioritizing sleep as a daily habit is something that we need to really, really look at. Number two is inadequate sunlight exposure. So it seems that every year, we learn more and more and more about how amazing sunlight is for our health. Beyond lighting our world, obviously, and helping us make vitamin D, it actually helps to regulate our sleep cycle too. 
What I mean by this is getting regular sunshine from outside, uh, especially early in the morning, really helps the body understand the difference between day and night, and it helps to reset our circadian rhythms. Now, if early in the morning is completely impossible for you, then may I suggest getting out at lunchtime, taking a break for 20 minutes, and just going for a walk. This signaling naturally helps the brain regulate certain hormones in the body that are responsible for waking us up, they're responsible for helping us fall asleep at night. So the result is consistent and restful sleep that comes naturally. So without proper sunlight exposure, we are so much more susceptible to developing insomnia. So remember, getting sunlight shortly after waking up and throughout the day will help you to control your sleep cycle. Some of you are going to cringe when I say that, that the next thing, which is to please put your phones, your tablet, electronics, artificial lighting away um, at home when it starts to get dark. Artificial lighting will trick the brain into thinking that it's still daytime and it causes sleep problems. Number three is, are you sleeping in the wrong environment? What does that even look like? What does a wrong environment even look like? So if you want to get optimal sleep, your bedroom has to be a bedroom. It has to be optimized for sleep. And there are several factors in the bedroom that we have to look at and we have to address. The first thing is huge. It's only using your bedroom for sleep and intimacy and nothing else. So the human brain is always looking for ways to make connections to make our behavior more efficient and it does so by associating different habits together with a place that they're performed. So you want your brain to kind of recognize your bedroom as a safe and a relaxing place as much as possible. So if you're constantly arguing or bringing work into the bedroom, then your brain will have a hard time allowing you to relax. So the next important change to make in your bedroom is to remove as much artificial lighting as possible, including lamps, phones, alarm clocks, and really anything that emits light. And at, and at night, um, if some light is needed, I would probably recommend either buying a soft orange or amber light bulb, a salt lamp, a candlelight, and wearing blue light blocking glasses can also be really effective if you don't have access to any of those other things. So finally, you want your bedroom to be to have a certain temperature. They say, and research shows that between 60 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit at nighttime, it's an optimal temperature for sleeping. Ideally, the body temperature drops naturally in the evening. So by lowering the temperature in your bedroom, you support this natural body cycle. Number four, did you know that if you have a damaged gut, that uh, it'll interfere with your sleep? Um, in other words, if your gut is working, it's not working well, it'll affect your sleep. So the gut is simple part of our body. And a lot of us think we eat, it digests the food, we pass it, and that's all the gut does. But that's not what it does. Uh, what science is telling us is that the gut actually has a very complex relationship with our brain, which is what controls the way that you sleep. For example, there are about 30 different neurotransmitters that can be found in the gut alone that can actually influence how we think, what our mood looks like, what our sleep looks like, and a lot more. So what many people are shocked to find out is that melatonin is found in much higher concentrations. So melatonin is the hormone that helps you to fall asleep. It's actually found in much higher concentration in our gut than in our brain. So I've noticed that many of our patients with chronic sleep problems have some serious issues going on in the gut. So a lot of times people um, ask me, well, if I have a sleep issue, why does that have to do with my nutrition? Nutrition has a lot to do with it because we got to heal your gut to be able to get your brain to work properly. Number five is carrying additional body weight. So having extra weight on your body a lot of people don't think it's a big deal, but it could actually have detrimental effect to your sleep. So those of us who are overweight, we are significantly more susceptible to sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is a condition that causes interrupted breathing during the night and it leads to disrupted sleep. And in many cases, snoring. 
So one of the things that we want to do is we want to look at people that are, are individuals that are overweight, that tend to have poor hormonal balance in many cases and blood, dis, blood sugar dysregulation. And the result is when we look at their nutrition and we help them to balance the way that they're eating, we help them to lose some of that extra weight. Not only do we heal the gut, we help a lot of hormonal issues, but also in a long run, it helps to really, really uh, get their sleep apnea uh, decreased. In a lot of cases, it goes away, the snoring goes away, and they're able to sleep better. So you want to work on reducing what you eat for dinner three hours before you go to bed. Uh, lots of time with patients, we recommend that your last meal really just include protein and vegetables and no significant carbohydrates, only what you get from your vegetables um, so that it helps your body to relax, it regulates your blood sugar levels and you are able to sleep better. Number six is not properly unwinding. It, I'm saying this and you're thinking, oh, what does that even mean? What is doctor, what do you mean I'm not unwinding? I'm sitting there and I'm watching TV and I'm unwinding. No, um, we've uh, alluded to this in our last week uh, video, but a stress in the bedroom is an absolute sleep killer. In today's fast-paced society, it can very much feel like that we're always wound up and unwinding can kind of be difficult. So if you find yourself lying in bed with your mind racing at night, this is this one is for you. Try making a habit of unwinding before you go to bed. So you want to set aside sites. You want to set aside some time to be able to get all your thoughts out of um, out of your head, all the things that you're worried about, that you're anxious about. You want to be able to do all of those things. So one of the best things that's really helped me is journaling. So I have a notebook not an expensive one, a dollar store one will do. And I just write down all the things that are in my head, all my to-do list for the day after, all the things that I've been thinking about doing and I just don't want to forget. And I have a look at it, all the things that have worried me during the day that have made me anxious or that, um, that are somehow at the back of my head and at some level, I'm giving them some thoughts, some energy. So I write all of those things down. And then what I do is I stop and I think about what it is that I'm grateful today. Because this entire process should not take more than a minute to a minute and a half. Yes, in the beginning, when you start, it may take about five minutes, but you really want to hone it down so that you're ready to go to bed when you're feeling sleepy. Um, and I just do a gratitude exercise, pretty much all the things that I feel I did really well today, all the things that I feel like my kids did really well today, and gratitude. And I think about that, and I give it intention. Some of you really love light stretching, and there are some fantastic yoga apps out there. There is a lot of um, different yoga practices um, on YouTube that you could do for five, 10 minutes before you go to bed. Some of you love meditation. That's another great practice that you could do. A prayer. And you could diffuse some lavender and essential oils and spend some time with a family, but you really do need to go through these routines to wind down. Another big thing that is a sleep killer is going to be going to bed with unresolved conflict with a partner. So if possible, try to resolve conflicts before going to bed and sleeping and in the bed is not a time to open a new subject that you're upset about. All right. And I know I'm guilty of that and um, I've worked on it and I'm still continuing to work on it so that we make sure that that's not something we take into the bedroom. So if you're guilty of that, I hear you partner, but it could be worked through. I'm a work in progress. Um, and uh, I'm sure that you could be a work in progress soon too. Another one that I really want to talk about is irregular sleep schedule. That means that you're going to bed at different times. Now, we are creatures of habit, and many of our habitual behavior actually occurs largely subconsciously, and it's and sleep is no different. So you want to have set sleep hours and do your best into not deviating from that. Do your best in not deviating from them. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure that this is being recorded. Um, and uh, you want to have set sleep hours and you want to do your best not to deviate from them. The more consistent you are with getting into bed at the same time after your unwinding routine, of course, the more intuitively your body will know when to start preparing itself for sleep. So some of our most profound recovery during sleep actually occurs between 10 p.m. 
till 2 a.m. So you want to really try to structure your sleeping schedule around these hours. You should notice some amazing benefits. Having a solid nighttime routine before getting in bed every night will also help to prime your body for sleep over time. Now, the same applies to waking up. So you want to be waking up at the same time every day. And this will really, really help to balance cortisol levels, which is a hormone that physically wakes you up. Number eight is physical tension. So any type of stress on the body. So sending signals to the brain that things are just not right, they're not safe, so I can't sleep properly because every time I'm going to move, it's going to hurt. So one of the things, and guys, our brain receives the stress signals and it responds accordingly. So although our stress response before used to help us with um, evading predators thousands of years ago, we no longer need to use those in the same way. So our brain now receives the stress signals and responds appropriately. Unfortunately, our brain can't tell the difference between being chased by a tiger or a stress that is being triggered by muscle tension. So muscle tension can be sending signal to your brain that you are under stress. One of the great ways that will help you to relax when you have muscle tension is taking an Epsom salt bath, a relaxing bath before bed. Number nine are nutritional deficiencies. There are certain nutrients that absolutely play a significant role in helping us to overcome our sleep issues. The first and the most important one is magnesium. And magnesium deficiency is really, really common in North America. So magnesium is used by over 300 processes in our body. Um, including a process that helps us to form GABA. GABA is a neurotransmitter that is in our brain and it helps us to relax and fall asleep. It allows the brain to calm down. So without building blocks to make GABA, including magnesium, relaxation becomes impossible. It becomes very difficult. So another big one is potassium and sodium. Having a proper balance of electrolyte will really help to maintain the, trans the transition of signals from brain through the nerves. And one of the symptoms of electrolyte imbalances, if you wanted to know, is insomnia. And this is to make sure that you're getting adequate amount of sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium in your diet. Uh, we get way too much sodium within our food. So what you want to do is you really want to add, you really want to focus on salads. This is why I said that you want to have vegetables and some protein for dinner. You really want to focus on avocados, on leafy greens, on broccolis, and sweet potatoes. These are some great things that you could add to your diet that really helps the balance the electrolytes. Number 10 is adrenal dysfunction. So adrenal glands are two kidney bean shaped glands that are on top of your kidneys. And um, they are, a lot of people overlook uh, the adrenal glands when it comes to sleep is one of the first things that we look at uh, besides all the above that we just talked about. The adrenal glands are responsible for secreting a stimulatory hormone that we call cortisol. Ideally, you want your cortisol levels to go up early in the morning so that you wake up with a lot of energy. Uh, but if, and you want them to decline throughout the day so that by the time you're ready for sleep, your cortisol levels are at lowest, your melatonin levels are at its highest. So it helps you to fall asleep and stay asleep. Some of you have cortisols that spike through the night and you call yourself night owls. That night owls really, it's, it's that discrepancy with the way that your cortisol should work and it's not working. And on top of this, a lot of people that have adrenal insufficiencies actually have blood sugar dysregulation. So that they are not taking enough protein during the day, they're taking way too much carbohydrate, their insulin levels are all over the place. So that causes the adrenal glands to become super tired. So you want to make, this is why you really want to make sure that you watch your diet, that you add all those nutrients that are, that are super necessary for adrenal, for adrenal glands to function. Number 11 is low GABA levels. All right. As we mentioned before, GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter that is responsible for putting the brakes on our brain. Insomnia is characterized by low GABA levels. So there are several factors that affect our GABA production. For example, if you're chronically stressed, that'll affect the amount of GABA that you put out. 
if you have blood sugar problems, that you have high, uh, high blood sugar and low blood sugar, and your insulin levels are going like this all the time, and that there is no stability, you will have GABA issues. If you have gut dysbiosis, remember we talked about how important our gut is with respect to our sleep, then you may have low GABA issues. And if you have deficiencies, as I said, in magnesium, now I'm gonna add a couple more here, vitamin B6, zinc, taurine, and glutamine, then you will have low GABA issues. Ironically, one of the things that causes low GABA, that further causes a problem, is actually lack of sleep. So we went through 11 things that could cause a lack of sleep. Stay tuned with us because in our next videos, we are going to go over uh, some of the other things uh, that would help us. For example, the next video coming up for you is um, just how to reverse this bad sleep. So you want to make sure that you watch the next videos. We're going to talk about stress resilience uh, coming up. But for those of you that have joined our video or our podcast, I just wanted to say welcome. Welcome to the Talk with the Doc Show. You're either following us on YouTube at Dr. Shireen Benakda or uh, on our Instagram or on Facebook with the same name um, or here on our podcast, Talk With A Doc Show. You can always subscribe, subscribe to our podcast. I really appreciate it. And you can also, the best compliment you can give us is to share our information for with those that you believe would need it. So here's the talk. With, this is Dr. Shereen Bernacter from the Talk With A Doc Show. God bless you and remember who you are.